third power and you know next thing you know you're on the ground looking up it's it's incredible he's a unique fighter and i, I agree with jim i don't think he's going to have a real fight till he jumps up the super feather and he appears to be living up to all the hype that we keep putting on it this could be special next up the wbc world super middleweight title defense by robin reed against henry water Robin Reed then, Jim, we've spoken about him during the week, young champion, the glamour boy in some ways, to, to rival Nassim Hamid. Yeah, but when well, it comes think, to the work, what does he bring to the job? Well, I think he's far more skillful than, than Wharton, but I just don't think he has the experience that's required. I think that's the big problem here. Uh, I think he has to inflict as much damage as he can in the first six rounds of the fight. I think after six rounds, I would say Reed has to have four of them in the bank with a couple of rounds to coast because uh, Wharton is a real good 12 round fighter, he has the experience over the 12 rounds, Reed has only gone 8 rounds and he's only done that once, so he has to get himself in front early and give him a couple of rounds maybe to coast. Yes, yeah, interesting, but he has been surprising us Nicky, hasn't he? He has, we've looked at him critically and he's answered the questions that we've, we've said about him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but Reed, in his last fight will have to improve uh, measurably on that last performance, he boxed a blown up like middleweight in uh, Pretorius and his defence was very, very leaky. Admittedly, he won't, um, I, he won't take Wharton so lightly. Maybe he was overconfident last time. Well, he knows all about Henry Wharton's quality. Mandatory challenger for this WBC title. A Commonwealth champion. And Henry has given very good account of himself already in world title opportunities, hasn't he, Barry? Yeah, he certainly has. He's a real battler. He's a tough cookie and a very, very strong guy. And what are the key fe features of this one? Yeah, well, we're trying to compare these guys. Really, is uh, you know 23 professional fights and hasn't been beaten up to now and his strength is he's shown in the Pretorius fight real power one punch finishing power there and uh, his accuracy and finding the target was great his timing was excellent as well he had to take a few shots too and showed a good chin but he is inexperienced and they had to do much of his growth under the magnifying glass and there is a question mark over his stamina because he did show signs of being uh, sixes and sevens a few times Henry Wharton, one tough cookie, very, very strong, and his big asset is his left hook, fabulous left hook, and uh, also his ability to absorb punches, he's a real durable guy, and um, tenacious, determined, keeps on, sticks to his task, but his weakness is the fact that, you know, he is easy to hit, and a little bit one-dimensional and predictable. Thank you, Barry. Henry Wharton. Well, you know, he's been through it a few times, and of course, for all of these fighters, there's the family concern as well. Uh, Robin Reed has his mother, Lynn, uh, at ringside tonight, we're here. I wonder if we can see her. No, we can't see her just yet. Uh, just one other feature. Everybody's talking about this as a, an even money fight in so many ways. Well, the uh, respective managers certainly think that it's that close. Frank Warren and Mickey Duff both settling on an even money 50,000 ahead. Mickey Duff generally only backs his own man when he really feels very, very confident. Bookmakers can hardly separate them. Robin Reed, 5-4 to four on. Henry Wharton, even money. And the draw, a 25-1 to one outsider. Here's Robin Reed's mum, Lynn. She's seen the young boy come on so strong in the last six months to a year. <laughs> I know what it feels like. You can hardly watch. Well, the boy goes to work next. The prince who is king. He 
is undisputed, undeniable, unbeatable. Outside the ring, he's even more explosive. Experience the personality and the power. Meet the real Nassim Hamid, the prince who is king. Fight now on video. My husband's hair didn't always look this healthy. He used to have dandruff. Some anti-dandruff shampoos didn't leave his hair looking as healthy as he wanted. Then he discovered new Pantene anti-dandruff shampoo. Its anti-dandruff formula works on the scalp to help get rid of dandruff, while pro-vitamin B5 nourishes at the root and penetrates all the way to the tip. Now his hair is dandruff-free and healthy looking. New Pantene Pro-V anti-dandruff for hair that looks so healthy it shines. Seal floor varnish. Easy to apply and makes wooden floors beautiful and tough. Ron Seal floor varnish. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Take it down. It's the final of the Pilkington Cup. Leicester. They've got absolutely wild here. Take on Sale. They're on their way to Twickenham. The Cheshire team have been on the ball all season, and victory in this game would be a sensation. But in Leicester, they face a team of proven cup pedigree, chasing a fifth Pilkington success. For both sides, though, defeat is not an option. Can Sale silence the Tigers' roar? The Pilkington Cup final next Saturday at 2, live on Sky Sports 1. World title fight coming up here at the Nine X, and back at ringside already, Prince Nassim Hamid. A short night's work complete. He knocked out Billy Hardy in just one minute, 25 seconds, hardly breaking sweat again tonight. But surely, in the coming fight, either fighter is going to have to work a lot harder to carry off the spoils. WBC World Super Middleweight title defense by Robin Reed now, and Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark after Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, for the third time tonight, it's World Championship Boxing. Coming to the ring, the challenger, Henry Wharton. twice before Henry Wharton has made this journey to the ring to fight for the world championship twice before he's failed against Nigel Benn 
and Chris Eubank. Tonight, will he become champion at the third time of asking? Long time ago, when he was 12, his dad, Billy, who's somewhere here at ringside tonight, told him that he had the talent to go all the way and would be crowned a champion. Hasn't happened yet. Tonight, he's convinced that this will be his time. Is he right, Glenn? Well, it's a, a very good, even match. I think it's a terrific match on paper, and I think everybody really looking forward to this. He's had two other opportunities to win the world title against Nigel Byrne and Chris Eubank, and I think in his own mind, you know, they were big names, and he didn't quite believe. Well, I think this is a, a much better opportunity for him. He's confident. You know, he's got that self-belief, that maturity now. Thousands of fans here from the Leeds and York area. They've travelled across the Pennines. He's got one of the biggest supporters clubs in British boxing. And he's one of the most charming men that you could ever wish to meet. Very, very likeable. Hugely popular. In fact, if popularity won world titles, this man would have been a champion a long time ago. He's a very hard, experienced pressure fighter with a great left hook. He says tonight he will ask Robin Reed questions that Reed has never been asked before. Here comes 26-year-old Robin Reed, cast as one of the glamour boys of British boxing. There have been those who've said in the past that he's a bit of a pretty boy who won't like it in the trenches. But I think he's given the lie to that already with a series of very good wins, particularly the last two. Yes, he's proved he's got the temperament for the job. He's proved that you know, he's got the looks, but he's also... He's got the bottle to stand and have a fight with opponents, and he's proved he's tough. Very, very capable. I think this is, is really his first major test. And if he can get past Henry Warden, he'll go on to be a big, big star. Robin Reid from Runcorn in Cheshire, although he lives in Bolton these days, making his second defence of the WBC Super Middleweight crown. He's won his last seven by stoppage. Both his world title wins have come in the seventh round. Taylor the tape, Wharton, 
the older man by three is at 29. Wharton's a bit taller, although it's Reed who has the longer reach. Wharton had to strip naked to make the 12 stone limit, but he's very comfortable to cap, say no problems. Reed well inside, nearly two pounds. Wharton has only had four more fights, though he's been around a lot longer. 28 fights in eight years for Wharton. Wharton, though, has boxed a lot more rounds, including five 12-rounders, whereas Reed has never been beyond eight. Reed with a higher knockout percentage, though they're both fair punches. Mandatory eight count and no three knockdown rule here. WBC rule, so that's different from the WBO. There is not a three knockdown rule in operation. in association with Adidas, ARD, and the Sun newspaper present a World Championship Boxing event. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Women's Control, steward in charge of this bout, Mr. Dennis Hopton, MP. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. Supervisor ringside is John Morris. Timekeeper assigned is Colin Roberts. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Daniel Van der Wheeler of Belgium, Ray Solis of Mexico, and Richie Davies of England. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action is Larry O'Connell of England. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for WBC. Super Middleweight Championship of the World! It's the first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold. His weight, 12 stones. His professional record, 25 victories, 19 KOs. He has 16 KOs in 6 rounds or less, with 2 defeats and 1 draw. He comes to us from York. England, here is the Commonwealth champion and WBC, number one ranked super middleweight champion in the world, Henry Walton. And in the bottom of the cross the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black, trimmed with white, wearing 11 stone, 12 and 1 quarter pounds. His professional record, all the way back to the bottom. 23 victories without a loss, with one draw, 18 carries to his credit, 15 knockouts in 6 rounds or less. From Hong Kong, England, here is the Well, every expectation that this could be a classic. We hope so. Referee is Larry O'Connell. London jeweler. Reed, freshness, Wharton's experience. Reed, a world champion, maybe ahead of his time. Wharton's last chance. Between them, they've scored 60 knockdowns in their career and only Wharton has been floored, and just once by Vincenzo Nardiello. Twelve rounds in what a lot of people hope will be the fight of the night, and maybe an epic. Let's see. Reed is the one with the white stripe down the side of his black shorts. I think that Reed's game plan has got to be to box here, use his jab, just get into this fight and box all he can. I guess both Ben and Eubank, when they beat Wharton, did it with some slick boxing. Sparkling display, particularly by Eubank, one of the best of his career. And that was in Manchester as well. It's the first time Wharton's been back in the city 
since that night in 1994, his last world title opportunity. Warden was saying to me, though, in Tenerife, where he's been training, don't underestimate my boxing skills as well. I'm not just a walk-forward left hooker. So he was a, a good amateur. He's got a, a good pedigree right throughout. It was only the, the good boxing of Ben and Eubank that he couldn't really cope with. And Eubank did it with a superb jab that night. But neither of them elected to, to have a fight with Henry Warren. That's the respect for his punching power. Reed, too, was a top amateur Olympic bronze medalist. And we haven't had too many of those, have we, in recent times. Good countering right there from Wharton, but Reed answers it with a nice right hand of his own. The suspicion is that Reed probably has the superior skills, but he's never been beyond eight rounds, and he's never been dragged into a fight with somebody as tough as Wharton, who's likely to put him under severe pressure as this goes on. There are so many questions to be answered in this one. Also, Warden's very big and strong. He's, he's been a light heavyweight before, but you know, he's, he just made the, the weight the second time when he had to strip off to do so. So he's big and strong at the weight. I don't think he's tight at the weight at all, though. I think it was just a little discrepancy with the scales. The no, I think he's, he's a good, solid super middleweight. Almost a battle of the left jabs in this opening round. They both have their successes with that shot. It's a cagey start. Reed's using the jab well, Ian. He's, he just seems to using that extra reach a little better at this stage. Just finding a couple of different angles keeping on the move as well, not just standing there in front of Wharton because that would be playing into his hands. The criticism of Wharton has been that he's a bit predictable, fights in straight lines. And I think Reed did enough to take that opening round. Yes, I would agree with you there. You know, he better work with the jab there from Reed. And he landed a, a few decent counters as well. And Wharton just fell short, but that was a, a good opening round. Both of them having a a good look at each other. Brian Hughes and Pat Barrett, the former European champion, in the corner with Robin Reed. There's the, the good use of the jab. He throws the, the combination here, but notice how quick he was to tie Warden up. He doesn't want to be caught inside, especially leave himself open to the left hook of Henry Warden. There you see it grabs quickly a hold of Warden. Doesn't want to let him get them arms free. The build-up to this fight, as we look at the jabs landed in round one, confirming that Reed had the better of that argument. The build-up, as I was saying, has been refreshing. No silly insults, slanging matches. They've both got a lot of respect for each other. Indeed, they're two of the nicest fellows in British boxing. They'll be disguising it pretty well for the next three quarters of an hour or so. Reed, remember, with the white stripe down his trunk. Sorry, Glenn, just doing the old identification again. This, I was going to say, this is probably the, the first real acid test for Reed. He hasn't really you know, caught the public imagination yet, but I think a, a good win here would, would do that. Lovely jab, that, from Reed, who I think, in his mind, still feels that there are a lot of doubters that he hasn't really arrived as the real thing. A lot of people still to be convinced. He aims to convince them. But I think that was because he was very quickly on the scene, wasn't he? Lovely left jabbing and boxing from Reed, who's staying on the move all the time. And look, he's moving away all the time, clockwise away from Wharton's left hook. Good right hand and left hook from Reed, who's really boxing superbly in this round. This is a good, he's boxing with experience here. And while it's on the outside, Reed is looking the superior technician. Just looking as he did for the first four rounds against Nigel Benn in his first world title opportunity. A shade circumspect, Wharton. Maybe he's playing Reed's game a bit too much. Yes, well, that's often been the, the criticism of Wharton that at times he's a, a little bit one-paced. 
and he can't really afford to, to be like that in this fight. He's got to pick the pace up and he's got to really put good pressure on Reed. He's trying to box behind his jab at the moment, but uh, I don't know. Maybe he'd be better off just doing his thing, which is walking pressure. Yes, I don't think it's a good point to try and trade jabs. He's got to try and get close, and he's got to throw combinations of punches. He's just getting caught on the way in, Henry Wharton. Slick strategy, well executed so far by Robin Reed, who is caught by a right hand, though, and there's still a long, long way to go in this story. Well, possibly there is, unless either of them can find a knockout punch or stoppage. Wharton can certainly take a punch, and there's no evidence at all yet about Reed being weak around the chin. Still, it's very much a, a battle of the jabs at this point. And Reed, for my money, looking the better at that game. Well, I think we suspected that's how it would be. We, we suspected that Reed would have the better boxing ability, and if he could, you know, if he'd have the, the patience to do that and just stay behind the jab, which is their game plan, just not to get involved in the fight at all and keep it at, at long range. You know, if he can carry on doing that, you know, he, that's the way he can win. And there it is from the textbook from Robin Reed. It's a good long stiff jab. He's also he's got good variety. Robin Reed, there's that jab that really pushed. And Wharton off balance. Just missing there with the, the right hand, but the left hook was a good one. Just put Wharton off balance for a split second. See, I think the thing with Reed is we don't really know yet how good he is. He is the kind of fighter who just seems to produce something more every time he's asked a, a different question. Wharton is pretty exposed. You know kind of what you're going to get with him. Round three, it's due to go 12 with the WBC Super Middleweight Championship on the line. It's highly competitive division. Nigel Ben's old title, this is, remember. Now, is Wharton going to try something different to change the plot? But somehow he's got to try and close the distance down a bit quicker because he's getting caught with a jab. Anyone, but also getting caught as he tries to make that step inwards, you know, with some with some good counters from Reed. Just single jabs in the main so far from Wharton, and not really following them up too much. But now he does. As I said, that a two-punch combination almost for the first time from the challenger from York. Is better from Ward. He's got to try and keep nice and close and let a lot more punches go than he is at the present. Reed continuing to rotate away from that left jab, and while he does it, getting in with the odd combination like that, then wheeling away again. It's the right tactics, and it's up to Wharton to find an answer to it. Yes, it is. He Reed seen the game plan shown by Ben and Eubanks, and I'm sure that's the, the, what he's going to try and do. Big right hand from Wharton. That lifted his army of supporters, and believe me, there are thousands of them in this 9X arena. And again. Now, this is breakthrough stuff, maybe, from Wharton. His best passage yet. Wharton's just trying to, to pick up the pace a little bit. That's what he's got to try and do, close the distance start getting more punches on target maybe starting to cut off the corners a little and letting go with right hand which is what he's starting to do because that's the way Reed is circling away from the left hook and he may make Reed think again that's a good shot though from the champion well this fight's starting to warm up now they're getting closer together more hooks are starting to land
Reed, I'm sure, is being very careful not to be dragged into a kind of trench warfare battle where he stands slugging toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wharton because that would be the challenger's game, you'd think, anyway. Yes, I think that's what Wharton would, would like to do. He's strong and he hits hard. He'd want to make it a fight. That was Wharton's best round yet, but did he do enough to win round. it? I'm not sure. It was a it was a good round. It was close. Yeah. Reed come back with some good work of his own. A very sort of even round. I'd probably score it even. But I think that from the Wharton sense, when he started to get a, a little bit closer, there were hopeful signs in that last round for Wharton. As he landed, they didn't quite land flushly with that punch, but he did enough to to put Reed on the back foot. I think that's a more promising round for Warden, who landed there with a good right hand. The left hand got through. I, I rather felt the right hit the glove then. Yes, I think he's got a, a pretty good defence, Robin Reed, but there was a, a good one from him who just that slipped through the, the little gap between the, the right hand and that landed on the chin. Warden sent out by his trainer, Gary Atkin. He's still managed by Mickey Duff. He stayed loyal to Mickey Duff despite all the defections from that camp. And uh, Mickey Duff is nearly 68 now, saying a Wharton win would give him almost as much pleasure as anything he'd done in boxing. Now Wharton starting to club away a bit. Now Reed waving him in. Now, I just wondered whether, if it got like this, whether Reed would be dragged into some toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. Hasn't happened yet. Yes, I think that's that's always the danger that Reed's pride gets the better of him. He doesn't stick to his boxing as he should and gets dragged into a fight. It's a sort of fighter's macho pride kind of thing, isn't it? Yes, I remember very well when Alan Minter did the same against Marvin Hagler, which was a, a big mistake. Oh, that's a great right hand, though, from Reed. Wharton left the gap, but then Wharton finds his own right hand. This is boiling up quite nicely, this is. with his jab now Wharton just managing to parry it off just flick it out of the way using a better defence now Wharton Wharton made to miss with that right hand it's so delicately poised But so far it's been a battle of boxing skills and not a slugging match. Oh, terrific, that was class, really was from Reed. Because he picked that right hand out very nicely. Not a lot of power in it, but it rocked the head back. The one is doing a lot better with the jab now. Reed's not having as much success. The suspicion though that Reed just has that bit more mobility and faster hands. Good stiff jab from Reed. Now, fascinating round. Probably just lean towards Wharton there, who was putting the pressure on, got a little bit more success with his jab in that round, and Reed's having to, to work hard, just going backwards all the time. He didn't have his timing as well in that round. Watch this classy right from Reed. Very good, very good right hand. Probably the best punch of the round there. He just found a little gap there and slotted that right hand in. Wharton come back, he kept the pressure on, a steady pressure there to Reed. And 
with that right hand again. He just picked that little space so well. Just did it on the move. Wasn't a powerful shot, but an eye-catching one. Tough round to score that one, I would. It was, it was close. I just, I just lent a little bit for Warren because of his pressure. Judges from uh, Belgium, Mexico, and uh, England's Richie Davis scoring. Larry O'Connell, the London referee. Remember, Reed, the champion, with the white stripe down the shorts. And that's how I've got it with, with Reed, just a, a point in the lead, a drawn third round, and Wharton winning the fourth. Wharton, for the most part, coming forward now, taking the fight more to Reed and having significantly more success than he was in the opening couple of rounds. So is the tide on the turn. the skills there to block those punches and parry them. The Wharton is throwing a lot more punches now than he did in uh, the first couple of rounds. Starting to just warm up the sense. It's the smarter work from Reed so far in this round. Staying on the move, never standing right there in front of Wharton. But Wharton really is a gritty, experienced campaigner. This is his 11th, 12th rather, championship fight tonight. Not all for world titles, of course. His third for the world crown, as we've been saying. But he's done uh, dozens of rounds at Commonwealth European level. And now he starts to get through with some body shots. They might slow Reed down. Good work from Warden there, just trying to change tactics a little bit, switch to the body. Warden coming back well in the second half of the round, getting through with his trademark left hook. Might have shaken Reed up a bit with that, and a right hand to follow it as well. Yes, I think he got through with one good one, but he was made to miss a few times in there as well. Reed was involved in a real ding dong battle in his last title fight against the South African Giovanni Pretorius, but found an absolute peach of a right hand to finish that job. Got in with a right uppercut there, but he can't move Wharton. Reed missing with, with those counter punches. Wharton just putting the pressure on more and more. And that was a better round for Warden. I think he certainly got that one. Yes, he came on really strong in the second half of the round there, Henry Wharton. And I just wonder now whether those questions we were wondering about are beginning to be asked about Reed. He's never been in here before with somebody hunting him down round after round after round. It's a big test of his temperament and class. Yes, and we can see here how Henry Warden's doing. He's getting closer. Reed here tucking up, keeping his hands up. Making Wharton miss there, but Wharton's strength starting to pay dividends. He's starting to get closer and closer to Robin Reed. I have the fight poised dead level at this moment. Really is a, a, a good fight. And you just sense that it, at some point this is going to develop into a real slugging match. Reed trying to box, but you just feel it's going to happen. Punches landed at over 79 Reed and 74 Wharton, says the computer. That shows how close this is. He's on a knife edge as we go into round six. Reed turning south for. So he's going to try something different. Will he confuse Wharton or himself? That's how I have it in dead level there for five rounds. Me too. I think that's the general feeling around ringside at the moment. I'm not sure the tactics of going southpaw because the left hook's a good punch against the southpaw and Wharton possesses a, a very good one indeed. 
Reid has done this to some effect before. Did it quite a lot on the night he won the title famously in Milan against Vincenzo Nardiello when Marvin Hagler, no less, was there to tell him what a good performance it was. A bit more tentative with the southpaw jab as it is now, Reid. I think uh, Wharton's wondering what this southpaw business is all about, and that's made him a bit cautious too. But he did land a good right hand there, and Reed just give him a little nod as if to say, "Yeah, you call me." There's not a great deal of action in this round. They're both standing off each other. It's the quietest round so far in a fascinating fight. Gone back to. Uh, Orthodox again, Reed, leading with the left hand, which is his usual. Oh, that's a terrific countering left hand from Reed. Real stiff jab, a sort of a half smile played around the lips of Wharton, acknowledging that he'd been caught. Nothing but total respect between these two, they like each other, two fellows from the North Country. Yes, he seemed to get quite a bit of power into that left jab there, Reed. And the right hand wasn't a bad one either. Scoring punches, Reed. Is he gonna nick this round in the last minute or so with his boxing? The right hand to the body wasn't a bad shot either. Certainly he's a lot better when he keeps himself nice and busy working behind the jab, Robin Reed. Nice right hand as well. It's a better round for Reed. You just wondered whether Wharton was beginning to get to him in that fifth round. But he's re-established himself quite well. I think Reed won that round probably in the last minute of it. Nothing much happened for the first two minutes. It's very quiet in the first two minutes, but Reed then started to use the jab to good effect. Let's uh, see what uh, another world champion at this weight, Steve Collins, is making of this. He's with Adam Smith. Well, Steve, this is bringing into the fight of the night. How do you have it? Well, I think Reed really got off to a very good start. He was beaten in the beginning of the fight, but he's starting to slow down now, and he's given Wharton time to get his big shots off. I think Robin needs to get more busy. He's just not active enough. He's given you know, Wharton too much time to put together these hard combinations. How do you see it going? Do you think Wharton now will... Uh, it's his fight now? I think Wharton had a good fifth round, and the sixth round was fairly even, so I see the fight fairly even, but definitely Robin Reed was winning in the beginning when he was busier, but Robin Reed has slowed down now. He's not active enough. And he's given more and more room and more time to let get his shots off. You know? One answer, Steve. Robin or Henry? At the moment, it's equal. But if Robin gets busy again, he can win the fight back. But if he doesn't get busy, Warren's going to come on strong. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thanks very much, fellas. 92 to 88 landed so far. <laughs> Reed, remember the champion with the white stripe down those black trunks. The former Ladbrokes cashier who took up boxing because he was a flop at karate. He certainly hasn't been a flop at boxing. Wharton, one of 11 children from a traveling family. What happens in this second half of the fight? This is a favorite round of reach to win. He's beaten both Nardiello and Pretorius in the seven. So far, Glenn, it's been a thoughtful affair, not the all-guns-blazing spectacle that some might have been hoping for, but we may get that later on, who knows? Yes, I think they're, they're both concentrating on jab work, with Reed just getting the better of the jab. I mean, it is, I think it is Reed plan to, to keep behind the jab and not make it a spectacular fight. Where Warren wants to mix it up, and you see, as soon as he gets close, he springs into action, trying to use that left hook. Wharton very anxious to try to rough Reed up at close range, but the eye-catching shot in that little interchange was that right hand from Reed, I thought. Got a great chin though, hasn't he, Wharton? Very good chin. He's been a very good professional 
a really likeable person as well, Henry Wharton. They both are both really nice guys, but it's all business in there. What has never been stopped in his whole eight-year pro career. Reed unbeaten in 24. to the body from Reed, following a good right cross too. Wharton's trying to wade away to the body. Trying to slow Reed down. But I think Wharton's just concentrating on his jab too much where he needs to get closer. I think this is similar to what happened when he fought Ben and Eubank, where he, you know, he, he stood back and you know, he's dominated behind a jab. He's got to try and put the pressure more on Reed. And I thought just the cleaner work from Reed. Personally, I don't know. What do you think, Ben? Yes, I would agree with you. I think I would give it to Reed simply on the, the good use of the jab, which was the, you know, the best punch throughout from, from either of them. But, Reed used a good jab and rocked the head back of Warren several times. And that was eye-catching. You know, it was good boxing work, and that's what he's got to try and do. I'm sure Brian Newsom will be pleased with him in the corner. Henry, Henry, Colin, there's one judge got nothing in it. You've got to do the work. You understand that? You okay? Come on. Henry, you're Mickey Duff telling Henry Wharton, there's one judge that's got nothing in it, you've got to do the work. I don't think Mickey Duff knows what the judges' scorecards are, but it's all part of this psychology. Sure, he's just trying to, to psych Wharton up and you know, tell him the right sort of thing to, to motivate him, get him to do a little more work. And there's Wharton trying to rough it up a little bit and make it hard for Reed inside. Eighth round. Reed, remember, with the white stripe down the shorts, if any of you out there still need the identification. Reed's super middleweight world title on the line here. Can Wharton become champion at the third time of asking? blaze away to the body at close range his battle plan is quite clear I think he's going to hunt Reed down and look to wear him down particularly in the late stages and remember it's worth repeating Reed has never been beyond eight rounds before we're not saying he doesn't have the stamina what we are saying is we don't know if he has that's right and that shows his inexperience at, at this sort of level in world championship fights But Warden is, is making it easy for Reed to keep to his game plan and keep behind his jab because Warden's not getting close enough in to Reed. Really good sharp right hand counter from Reed just now. Is Warden applying enough pressure for his battle plan of wearing Reed down? No, I don't think he is. And I think he's concentrating too much on his own jab, trying to match Reed with jabs. He's not winning that battle. And you know, for me, he needs to, to get close and start letting a lot more leather fly in the hope of landing with a big punch. Reed just out boxing Wharton in this round a bit. Making him miss. Question has to be asked here, is Wharton fighting Reed's fight? Yes, I would say that, that he certainly is. He's given Reed the room and the time to box his fight and to use the jab, as you see him doing there. You know, and Wharton coming in too much without throwing punches. Uh, has to abandon the attack, Wharton, because Reed, on the move, found him with a right hand. <laughs> 25 seconds left in this round. Wharton 
still comes forward. There's a relentlessness about him. He wants this so bad. And he finds Reed with a left hook. Late in the round. But Reed is matching him. Again, Reed throws that jab with a lot of power in it. Terrific action. And Robin Reed got the best of it over that three minutes. Yes, Warden picked it up there. He's trying to push Reed as hard as he can. And that was better from Warden, but it just brought better work out from Reed, whose jab was excellent in that round. And the counter punches were good. And when they got close together, Reed was coming out with the better punches inside as well. So he's boxing a very good fight at this point, Robin Reed. Well, I think in this fight, Robin Reed is showing everybody what a good champion he is whether he holds on to the championship of course we don't know but he's produced some pretty smart stuff hasn't he so he's shown the, the class that got him a bronze medal in the olympics and the class that the class that got him a, a world championship so early when he had to go to to italy to and take the title of vincent Vincenzo nardiello and he's shown that sort of class here boxing a, a very good fight here robin reed at the moment ninth round new territory for reed You wouldn't think at this point that there would be any stamina problems because Warden hasn't pushed and made it that hard a fight you know, th that would really worry the fitness or the stamina of Reed. He's boxed pretty much you know, as he wants Reed here and he hasn't pushed him too hard. And Reed's pulling away on your score cup guard and mine at the moment. Just three, three points ahead I now have Reed and we're getting his boxing going very well. But what happens in these final four rounds it's not too late certainly for Wharton and who knows this may be his time of the fight I'm sure Reed must have aimed all his trading at knowing this probably would go the full 12 round distance he's looked at Wharton's record He's seen that people like Ben couldn't stop him, and Eubank, oh, that's a big right, Warren left himself open. Just occasionally, Warren's defence starting to look a bit sloppy. It is, that was a very good punch there, just doubling up on that hook there, the right hand, and both of them landing body and head. And if we believe the press conference publicity, Frank Warren in the Reed camp, and Mickey Duff in the Wharton camp have had a £50,000 side bet on this. Winner take all. I think the one thing we know is Wharton still has the power. Tremendous left hook and he's, he's got to be looking to try and land that punch. Everything could change if he lands with that correctly. stalking stalking all the time but Reed is staying on the move and while Wharton's thinking about letting the punch Reed's letting a couple go and then he's off on his bike again yes the, the better crisper punches the more eye-catching punches are still coming from Reed and at the moment we're getting a run of rounds that seem to be going the champion's way but don't write Wharton off yet. Big left hand as well from Reed, who looks crisp and confident at the moment. Looks like a fighter who's getting better with every fight and who knows what he's doing. And I think he's won four in a row now, Glenn. Yes, exactly as I have it in the last four rounds. For me, all going to Robin Reed, who's boxing very well behind the jab, and when when one comes in, good good punches there as well. Now Reed's been in two scheduled 12 rounders. He, he never got to the 12 rounds. Warren's had 11, but um, five times he's actually completed 12 rounds as well. Reed, as we've said, has never been beyond eight before. So he's, uh, as we've been explaining to you in new territory here no sign of him flagging so far though 
No, I don't think Warren's exerting enough pressure on Reed to really test the stamina out. He's he's giving Reed a, you know too much time to to control the jab. And there you see the eye catching punches are coming from Reed. There you see getting him with a, a good left hand and then a, a little right hand and Warren just throwing arms and not connecting. Tenth round. Now might we see Wharton here, who must have been appraised of the situation in his corner with Danny Mancini and Gary Atkin and Mickey Duff in there. I wonder if they've said to him, look, you've got to jump on him and really go for it now. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure he knows himself this could well be his very last chance. Good right hand there from Reed, similar to the one he caught Pretorius with there for Wharton's chin. Stood up to it well. Reed was looking for another one. Wharton wasn't buying that. Wharton looking a wee bit more tired now. He's taken a few in these last four rounds. Oh, lovely right uppercut. Then a left hook from Reed, who's starting to turn on the style in cameos. Reed there covering up couldn't really get in the clean punch he was looking for to the chin Reed winks at somebody at ringside it wasn't you was it <laughs> I don't think so it looks like to be a cut on the bridge of the nose now on Wharton low blow from Reed Larry O'Connell hasn't been needed that much it's been fairly clean stuff the Wharton fans are beseeching their man to really start letting the leather fly Cut by the nose, looks pretty horrible for Wharton, who's hit with a right hand and hurt. He staggered there, I thought he was going to go for a moment. But that great resilience kept him there. But Reed is in charge, big time at the moment. Well, Wharton, Reed, sorry, he's kept nice and patient here. He didn't rush in. He knows Wharton still has firepower left. He can obviously feel the strength of Warren. He's just biding his time, landing good, solid punches here, Reed. Well, Wharton knew that Reed would be good, but I bet he never thought he'd be this good. Good, good defense there from Reed on the ropes. Just bobbing and weaving, missing them punches. Some of the people at the back of the hall think these shots from Wharton when Reed is on the reps are actually landing, but he's covering up quite superbly for the most part went for a big big punch there Reed but missed wildly Warren again looking to unload on him but not really getting through in truth the Reed looking a little tired in there as well are those legs beginning to stiff up a bit for Reed is there hope still for Warren who's behind on the scorecards probably lost that round again I think we're getting to the stage where Wharton needs the knockout and he's got a nasty damage to the nose. Yes, he's got damage. He got hit with some heavy punches there in that round. 50%, just over success rate for Reed. Very good, very quality. 32% for Wharton, so a big difference there. But he was landing some very hard punches there. And at one point there, the right hand, the legs go. He didn't follow it up, Reed. Maybe he just missed an opportunity there, but he certainly looked hurt, Warden. That was a very heavy punch to the side of the head. Look at him stumble forward there. I think what Reed is showing in this fight, though, is what a very cool, composed boxing brain he has. Yes, he's showing that you know, maybe he is the finished article, that he's, he's got the boxing, he's got the boxing brain, he's got the power, and he's boxing very well at this moment. There can be little doubt that Robin Reed is in a significant points lead as they come out for the 11th round. Reed with that white stripe down his shorts. Then has him in a five-point lead. Five rounds, if you like. He's winning everything from round six onwards, Reed. I think many would expect Wharton to come on stronger at the end of the fight, but Reed's been the one who's got better as the rounds have gone on. Reed, who does his training right here in Manchester at the Collyhurst gym with Brian Hughes. 
Oh, a good uppercut there. Testing the chin of Reed. Reed not looking quite so mobile. I think he's beginning to tire a bit too. But yeah. Reed, it, Wharton is a bit unsteady on his legs, I think. Yeah, three nice, classy punches there from Reed. But Wharton really trying to exert the pressure here, going all out to try and land a punch. Could Wharton turn it all around with one jackpot punch, you wonder? Oh, Wharton clubbing him across the head there. Back on the jab now, Reed. He's trying to keep walking his beard to steady him behind that jab and using it very well. The Yorkshire fans are chanting Henry, Henry. There's already been one Yorkshire winner tonight with Prince Nassim. And Wharton letting them all go, getting caught with a counter, but throwing in the kitchen sink. The credit to Wharton, he's pushing Reed all the way. been his best round in a while this Wharton at least he's really getting close to Reed and throwing some punches Reed continues to catch him with these crisp little counters still light on his feet and strong looking Reed isn't he I wondered if he was starting to tire at one point in that last round but it doesn't look like it does it no it doesn't he looked down at the corner just a little while ago Brian you said side to side and immediately he got Boxing again, Reed. One of the exhorters, uh, a lot of pressure in this round. Again, Reed covering up and still coming out of his shell to find those neat little punches with Wharton. Good left uppercut. Good round, this one. Oh, there's a big right from Wharton there. Did he get through to Reed? There was a clinch. And I just wondered for a moment whether Reed's leg stiffened. There was a big right hand from Wharton. That was a good round from Wharton. He knows obviously he's a long way behind and he pushed hard in that round. He sensed he maybe shook Reed a, a, a few times during that round. Reed tried you know, just to keep his boxing going, but Wharton was beginning to get through the, the guard and get to Reed a little bit. No telling how the judges have this, of course. Here's a good jab. He's used that so often. But I think for the for the most part, the pressure was good from Warren and probably clinched him that round. He maybe needed a bit more of that kind of uh, do or die stuff earlier on. Yes, I think you know that's been a problem in a couple of his fights. Certainly the Ben, he didn't start to do the, the heavy work to lay in the fight when it was too late. This could be the case here. The jabs landed 106 Reed to 67. Wharton. Last round. WBC super middleweight title fight. Crowd here absorbed of this. Many of them on their feet applauding the two fighters. They've enjoyed this. We all have. Yes, I think you couldn't fail to enjoy this. This has been good boxing, good pressure. Both showed very 